This time on Street Rag Garage, we're getting into the new generation of classic vehicle, the square body S10. This ought to be a good time. sure everybody knows that the price of classic vehicles is going through the roof so next generation of classic vehicles is coming into being and that would probably be the mid 80s stuff like the square body like the Camaro we have over there mid 80s late 80s maybe early 90s but stuff like this 70s it's just it's ridiculous the price people want nowadays so we are gonna have to start into the 80s so this is, what is this, 89, I think, 88, 89, square body, I like to call it S10. It's been wrecked. It's been wrecked pretty, yeah, pretty lightly, I would say. The hood's damaged, the fender's bowed out, the bumper's trash, we don't have a grill. Uh, this has only been parked for about five years. This should not be hard to get running again, even though the previous owner said, hmm, it was doing some funny things before, but we will have a look into it. The rust is not so bad for a Midwestern vehicle. I mean, it has some cab corner rust right here, but the bed is fairly solid. Um, it only has like, I think it only had like 90 something thousand miles on it. Uh, V6 automatic truck. Another reason I'm getting this truck is the price of fuel is also going up and uh, we do roadside assistance and it's getting pricey. We need something a little bit smaller, a little bit better on gas and hopefully that has air conditioning. Well, my other truck has air conditioning, but hopefully this one will have AC as well. Let's get this pulled up underneath our shade tree because I'm not working in the sun and we will get started. Okay, we got our faithful international tractor here. That fires up like every single time. So let's get this pulled back up underneath the shade tree and start working on it. Oh, it's trying to get away. Turn the wheel a little bit here. All right, that should do it. Let's get this pulled up through the shade tree. You didn't see that, did you? Yeah, you saw that. We didn't hit anything. I didn't have that strap secured enough and uh, <laughs> we came real close to hitting our ramp truck. It's, uh, it's kind of downhill from there. So uh, let's try that again and make sure we have our rope, our strap secured really good this time. Okay, now I'm just gonna give a little bit of push and it should roll 
right on down the hill and our brakes in theory oh, should work i should have pulled that just a hair more with the tractor i guess there we go there we go almost there get underneath the shade tree oh, that's good enough okay yeah, we definitely have a problem with the ground slanting and our vehicles rolling rolling away sometimes okay now that we're underneath the nice uh, shade tree here we can start our mechanicing first let's uh, do a walk around and look and see what we have here so of course we're gonna get rid of that fender this door it's got some flakes on it but we might be able to save on it it's still pretty solid yep the bottom solid the ruckers eh rocker panels a little bit right there but the rest of it's nice and solid the bedside at least this bedside is really good shape nice bedside on that the interior of the bed is really good just look at the wheel wells on this thing they are nice i mean i don't see one single dent in the wheel wells that's unusual for a, a pickup truck I really don't see any dents in the bed either so this side of the bed has a little bit of rust right there and this side has a bad cab corner this door is not great there's a hole in that door and actually we can save the fender so that's nice Okay, time for our battery, and today we will be using the Walmart Max EverStart uh, that I did not buy because I don't buy the Max. I buy the value because it's basically the same battery with a different sticker on it, uh, but it has a five-year warranty where the, uh, the value ones only have a one-year warranty. So you're just basically paying the extra money for the warranty. So. I don't buy them because I usually don't keep the car that the battery is in long enough to worry about it. But if you notice here, we do not have a handle. But here's a life hack for you. Your old battery or your old dead battery that has a go handle, it just snaps in. You just take your little screwdriver and push up on that little tab right there. And you just slide that guy out which is way easier to do when you have two hands. So let me set the camera down. We can just pry one side up. Oh yeah, don't let the battery acid leak onto your jeans because then you'll have to go to uh, Tractor Supply or Rural King and buy another pair of $10 jeans. That's, uh, that's the other life hack. Just go to Tractor Supply, buy you some work jeans. They're like 10 bucks. Anyway, there is your go handle. So we'll attach it to the other battery. Like so, push, click, push, click, go handle. So what I'm saying is before you uh, take that core battery back to the Walmart to get your new battery, yank that go handle off and just set it to the side. That way you will have it for next time. All right, we will use our newly acquired pliers uh, to tighten this down because, yeah, you can tell somebody uh, didn't use the right tool on these because the ends are kind of stripped off. That's why I don't like side post batteries. Okay, there's that. Uh, let's set this stuff to the side. On our other 80s cars, our Camaro there that somebody was asking about. Uh, I forgot who asked about that. Somebody asked in the comments on the uh, ramp truck video what if that was for sale. So, uh, no, it's not for sale, but after we do a revival on it, yeah, it might be for sale. So, ask me again then. All right, let's give it a crank and see if it just magically comes to life. 
All right, let's uh, give her a crank. Oh, the key works. We shouldn't have to really pump it because it's fuel injected. Uh, cycle the key a couple times. Cycling the key uh, initiates that first little bit of fuel. I'm not good with these trucks, but I know if you cycle the key a couple times, it gets the fuel pump going. I wonder if we have fuel in this. Maybe we should have started with that. Um, yeah. Now it shows half a tank of gas. They said this was sitting for about five years and it ran when parked. An RWP. So we have ourselves an RWP that is no longer R-ing. Okay. If it was gonna start easy, it would have started already. So uh, next thing, we will open up this cap. Hope nothing, oh, there is something in there. Yeah, there's a spider. Oh, can you see him? Can you see him right here? Come on, I need to. I need that gas cap. Go on, go on, go on, come on. Okay. Well, it's probably a jumping spider too. Uh, he's still there. Now, you really need to go. Well, yep, he jumped, there he goes. Okay, now we're good. It wouldn't be much fun to stick our head down there and have a jumping spider jump in our ear. So let's turn the key on. I don't know if you can hear that. Try it again. No, you can't hear that. I stopped now because it's primed. But yeah, the fuel pump is making some noise. So we have fuel pump. Uh, okay, well, we're gonna have to test some things. Fuel injection vehicles, they either run or they don't. So this one doesn't, so it's not as much fun as a carbureted. Now the next thing we want to know is, do we have a Schrader valve on a fuel line inlet that we can depress to see if we have uh, fuel coming up? And that's a good question. So right here is our fuel line and it goes right there into the back of our carb, through here and to the injectors. Now a lot of these will have a Schrader valve that we can Put a fuel gauge on and test our fuel pressure this one does not i guess they had not gotten around to it on these models as of yet so we can't do that but we can test our injectors to see if they are working and in here is what we call noid lights so if you don't know what these are they're little lights with little prongs on it and we can plug it in we can unplug the fuel injectors and plug these into the, uh, the terminals that plug into the fuel injector and see if there's an impulse, a pulsing light that comes on telling us we have signal to our fuel injectors. It doesn't mean the injector's not clogged, but it means that we do have a pulse going to the injectors and that they should work if they're not clogged up. So let's plug one of these guys in. They're all different sizes for different types of uh, injectors, but we'll give this guy a try and See if she flashes. All right, looks like we'll be using this guy since it says uh, GM TBI on the bottom of it. Throttle body injected. So I pulled these out and this should slide right into place, right there. Now I'm gonna set this right about here. I'm gonna go crank on it. You guys take a look at this and let me know if it's flashing or not. That way we'll know if we have injector pulse. Okay, here we go. Let me know if that flashes, all right? Okay, well, it's flashing, so we're good there. Let's check the other one real quick. Okay, let's pull this guy out of here. Stick him in here. Turn it a little bit so you can see it. All right, have a look at that one. See if that one flashes real quick. Okay, here we go. Well, we have injector pulse. So, 
wonder if we can spark. I'm going to go ahead and throw these back together. And I really just wanted to show you how those worked. That's not the order I would have went in. The next next thing I'm going to do and what I would have normally done is just go ahead and throw a little gasoline down here and see if it fires off. Sometimes, you know, the fuel pumps get a little bit weak and it needs some help getting, you know, the fuel up. So, uh, gasoline or spray something. I'm going to go grab something. We're going to spray it and see if it fires off real quick. I don't seem to have any gasoline in the cans and uh, I don't want to go into town to get some. I'm going to go ahead and use the old brake clean. This is not uh, something I would generally, generally do and not a good idea. But uh, this has only been sitting for like five years. So it's not like a 20 year revival that we're going to damage some stuff and all that other fun. Normally I would use some two cycle oil. Don't have that either. So we're going to use what we have. Now let's give this a crank and see if it's a fire. Well, she's going, uh, and she's idling, which is what you expect from a fuel-injected vehicle. So yeah, well that was uh, that wasn't too hard. Let's give it a little bit of gas. Let's see if she's gonna smoke. Oh, she's smoking. Okay. Well, we have a little bit of smoke out the back, so probably. Uh, probably got some rings that need to seat in just a little bit we're gonna let this idle for a while maybe see those rings or those valve seals maybe they'll come back around let that oil oh, I forgot to check the oil we better check the oil real quick all right oil I got way too excited on that one that should be the first thing we do check the oil make sure there's some in there but I didn't hear the lifters clattering so can't be too bad Oh, uh, yeah, it's about halfway on the stick. It's in the little hash marks. It doesn't smell that bad, actually. Let's go ahead and pop this open. See what we got here. Uh-oh. Nothing in here. And only half, not even half full. Only about a quarter full in here. Let's grab some brake fluid and uh, see where this is going. Maybe that's why it's crashed in the front end. Uh, maybe they lost brakes and boom, slid right into something. That would make sense. <laughs> Let's have a look under here and see if we see brake fluid on the tires or somewhere on the frame. I don't want to see. Huh. Okay. I don't know where that brake fluid went to, but it went somewhere. Let's let it run for a little while and see if it clears up. I'll give it a try. Maybe we can take this around the block or something. Okay, it has been running for about 15 minutes. It's nice and warmed up, but she's still, I don't know if you can see it, still puffing just a little bit of smoke out of the back. Well, if we're lucky, it'll It'll still clear up once we get more temperature, maybe a couple a couple different heat cycles in it. Let's uh let's run this around the block and see how it does. Okay, let's pull out of here and take this uh on a little trip and see how she does. Oh it's a little oh it's, it's stuttery stuttery right there trying to pull out of the driveway oh come on are you gonna die let me put it back up in the park real quick hmm that's a little concerning we haven't even went anywhere yet okay try that again and it died again mm. 
I wonder if we just have old gas. I mean, it's half a tank of five-year-old gas at the very minimum. So maybe that's our issue. Oh, there we go. She's moving. Little concerning. I'm just gonna go around the block. Uh, one, two, that shifted a little late too, but not to be expected. Nothing concerning there. So I'm just gonna go around the block, which our, our blocks are a little bit long out here in the middle of nowhere. So if I, the furthest distance would probably be a mile maybe two miles if I get all the way onto the back side and have to walk back so and get the ramp truck okay hopefully we do okay if not I brought our road repair kit a jump start pack a jump pack and a, a tool kit so that's what we have to work with I tried to roll this window down but it only went down that far the other one rolled down so that's another thing we're gonna have to check on. We're gonna have a few repairs to do on this thing to get a road ready, but it's, right now it's driving pretty good, so. Let's hit on some more traveling music and uh, take this around the block and see how it does. good just I came up to one stop sign and it did die out so it's still doing that hopefully it's just the uh, bad fuel that's in it that last road that we were on was a state road and I was able to get it up to some you know normal highway speeds and it did pretty good now I'm looking here right here and uh, our temperature gauge is not working so I don't know if we're getting any false readings to the computer causing it to you know not deliver the right amount of air to fuel ratio because that all ties in so that may be an issue we're coming up on the final stop sign here so let's see if it it dies again and the brake seems to work though a little it's a little low oh it just died it was a little low idle there and then all of a sudden it's dead so let's turn this key again uh oh uh oh Uh oh. One more time. Nope. Okay, well, you know what time it is. Yep, we're gonna have to walk all the way over there. <laughs> At least we got lucky on that part. Okay, this time we are gonna make the uh, downhill slope work in our favor. I don't even have to push this thing. It's just gonna go right on in there. Made it. But I'm gonna spray it again with a little bit of brake fluid and see if we lost uh, fuel pressure. So if it starts up and dies, we know we're not getting fuel. If it doesn't start up at all, then we know we're probably not getting spark. So let's see what we have here. 
Okay. Oh, we have a fuel issue. Well, we lost our fuel. I wonder if our fuel pump went off or went out. Just try that one more time. I think we have a weak fuel pump. She's back to running again. Yeah, now it makes me a little concerned about taking it back out. Uh, wonder how we, you know, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm gonna have to see how we test the uh, fuel pressure and how much fuel pressure that we're supposed to have on the OS 10 like this. I think we, I think we have a fuel pump issue myself. And maybe we just have a clogged. Uh, we could have a clogged fuel filter as well. Hmm. Let me shut this down again. Let's see if she starts back up again. Huh. That is weird. Let's sit there and run. But then we shut it off and it won't start again. Odd. Let me just give that one more try here. Oh, now it starts. Oh man, that's weird. I didn't spray it that time. Mm. That's weird. We have ourselves a conundrum. Turn it off again. And it doesn't start. I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for about 20 minutes or so and see if it comes back around when it cools off. Uh, I am really hoping it's just maybe bad gas, but that doesn't seem right. I mean, it runs just fine at idle. And then every now and then it'll start, then every now and then it won't. I need to check the fuel pressure, I really need to. All right, it's been sitting for about 20 minutes now. Let's see if it'll fire. And it fires, huh? Okay. So uh, yeah, that really, it really makes me think it's the fuel pump. Uh, probably when it gets warmed up, the fuel pump is not pumping like it should. Not uh, not getting as much pressure. When it cools down, it starts up and uh, runs fine. So okay. Let's shut it down and start it one more time. It should still start right up, I would say. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, there it goes. It still struggled a little bit. One more time. It's struggling to start, so. I think we need to get this back to the house and work on it there where we have some more tools and a little bit more time and don't have to worry about uh, driving this back and breaking down on the way. So I'm going to hook this up. I'm going to use the old school tow bar method instead of the trailer. So let's get this hooked up and head back to the house. All right, so a lot of you probably know what this is and where it came from, but for you that don't, it's a tow bar, but this is what U-Haul used to use back in the old days, back when all the cars had big steel bumpers on it and you could easily hook these up and uh, you know, tow your car around, no big deal. Well, we went away from big steel bumpers and we went to resin plastic fiber bumper cover things and well, these just sort of went away. But every now and then, if you look on I think I got this on Craigslist back when Craigslist was actually cool. Um, Facebook Marketplace, you might find one or two of these still laying around. These are heavy 
duty. These aren't like the new tow bars that you see nowadays. This is this is really built because uh, cars weighed three, four, or five thousand pounds back in the day, and uh, <laughs> trucks didn't stop very good. So you had to have something heavy duty, and this is it. So I'm going to get to hooking this up on here. I'll show you how it hooks up if you're interested. And uh, we're going to tow this, flat tow this back to Indianapolis, about an hour away from here. All right, I just got this guy hooked up. Uh, it was a struggle because it's been probably 15 years, give or take, since I've used this. It's been a long time. It's just been sitting around in the barn. Yeah, ever since I bought a trailer, I haven't used this. Why would you? <laughs> Let's have a look at it real quick. Come in here. I'll show you how this works. So basically, you just start by hanging it. Uh, it's got these little clevis. You just hang this unit on top of the bumper right here. And it has one, right here it has one chain that you can tighten and you put that on a really good frame mount. A frame hole where we have a frame hole and it's got two on each side there's one there there's one there and then this one goes to the bottom of your bumper so you hang it first uh, I mount the chain to the frame and then I do this uh, bottom one so once you get a get it nice and tight you or once you get the chain up underneath there and you get it connected to the main frame you tighten that sucker down until the spring compresses uh, this one not quite compressed all the way so we'll tighten that up a little bit more and then you come and tighten the top ones that bring it down actually tighten these I tighten these first to the bumper so it's drawn all the way down uh, and then tighten up these guys here which draw it in and this one you don't tighten because it just it's just to hang the bumper there then you come over here, this fits your uh, two inch or uh, two and five sixteenths, whatever, ball. Screw it down, connect your safety chains, and you're good to go. Uh, you're supposed to pull the drive shaft if you're towing over like, I can't remember, like 20 miles or so. So pull the drive shaft and, well, tow it. So that's pretty much it. It just follows behind you. Like uh, you see those RVs with those older folks going to Florida. That's basically, that's old school of what they're using. Except those are, you know, got all those weird things on it. Shocks and all that good stuff. But And they're mounted to the frames of the car. But yeah, that's basically it. That's what they're using. So this will follow us all the way back to Indy, hopefully. So let's go ahead and start on our way and uh, get to mounting these body panels. We need body panels. Let's get this thing stripped down, put some panels on, and figure out why, why it is dying. I think fuel pump still. Well, we're back here at the house and it towed just fine, no problems at all. Tow, those tow bars are really good, uh, but you gotta have a bumper, so there's that. Anyway, just got done taking a whole bunch of bolts out. And now it's time to remove the panels. So let's get on that. All right, bumper. Hood. We'll have to take off the wipers. We're not gonna throw that. We gotta reuse that. We gotta reuse the wipers too. I shouldn't have thrown those. And fender. It's just that easy. Of course, in reality, it really wasn't that easy. I uh, say what it take, maybe an hour, hour and a half. I mean, it wasn't too bad. Get all those bolts out. We had some rust issues, but most of them came out pretty, pretty easy. Let's have a look real quick and I'll show you some of the damage that we'll have to repair before putting the new parts back on. So it got hit 
I would imagine sort of at this corner and it had a little rust right here that got knocked out. You can see all this, this gunk right here, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's a slight bend in this panel, the uh, core support. But I think if we just pull on it, it should be flimsy and rusty enough to pull back into shape. Um, there's a little, there's a little ding here. It probably pushed in just a hair, but we'll have to put our, our fender on and see if that uh, lines up. It seems like it's tweaked just a, maybe a little bit down. So we should be able to tweak that. I'm not gonna put a new core support on here because we, we can tweak this and this truck isn't not quite worth a new core support, but that would eliminate this little bit of rust that we have right here. Inner fender well is in good shape, so we can hang on to that. Now, the only other big issue we have is this frame horn right here. This one appears to be tweaked just a hair, but this one, can you see that? The way it's bubbled out, it got pushed sideways a little bit and it's bent out there. And can you see it? There's a crack there. And where is it at? Right back, oh, right there. You can see how that's bowed out a little bit. So we need to bring this over just a, just a hair and this one just a touch back. But no big deal. That's why they make sledgehammers and torches. And we'll have a look at this, uh, this fender that I did take off. It is a mess underneath. It is, it is rusted out. It's pulled out a little bit from being wrecked, but uh, it would have been a lot, a lot smaller gap, but I mean, this is all rusted. It was already rusting and then when it got hit, it just blew apart the seam. So it should have been, you know, more like this all the way up, rust and just come apart. So the fender is a little bit structural. So when they start to rust out, you lose a, you lose a bit of your rigidity man that uh that trim i was hoping that trim would be good because i wanted to put it on the other fender it looks okay on this side but it's kind of eat up i don't know i don't know if we can use that or not we'll give it a try yeah it's uh it's pretty bad our bumper was really messed up our hood wasn't so bad it just had a little bit of damage right across here so not so bad, but I was able to find brand new stuff, brand new aftermarket stuff. This, uh, it was made in Taiwan, uh, but it's, it's still, it's still pretty good quality. It's pretty thick. Uh, got the bumper, got the fender, got the hood. I had a grill, but it's the wrong grill. It's the older grill, but it came out as a package deal for, you know, like 150 bucks. You can't beat that Facebook marketplace. So I still need to find the big full-size grill for it instead of the smaller one that I got. But we'll start putting these parts on. We'll pressure wash this truck first and we'll start getting these parts together and uh, see what she has to look like. See what she looks like. We probably ought to scuff these fenders. You think we should paint these? Maybe we can spray bomb them. Let me check to see what the paint code is. And yeah, maybe I'll run down to the auto parts store and just rattle can this so we don't have obvious repairs with black fenders and red truck so maybe i can take the fender and match it up okay let me go to the auto parts store let me check on some paint maybe we should spray paint these before i start fooling around and wash the truck here we go okay so we got the power washer all hooked up i guess it's time for a little power washing and a music montage
Well, I ran out of gas right there at the very end, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much done. Sprayed down the engine real good. So, see our nice clean alternator now. And uh, there wasn't too much grease or debris on there, so the engine turned out pretty well. Not that you can see anything or would want to see anything in there, but it's clean. Oh, I should have brought you in before for a before shot, but you probably couldn't see it on camera, but it was, it was a lot dirtier yeah, than what it probably looks like at a distance. It's still still a little dull, but it is clean. It had all that uh, old debris on it from sitting. I left a little junk in the bed because it's turned around slanted, slanted down, but what's that? Oh, there's some spray foam insulation. Where did that come from? I don't know yeah hopefully it's not in this truck uh, this truck has been repainted you can see like right here it's the paints chipped off in the bed in a few spots like there so somebody somebody liked the truck and they got it all fixed up at one point uh, this cab corner I blew a lot out of here that's maybe maybe that's where that Great foam insulation come from, but nah. It's just regular, just regular cab corner rust. But yeah, it looks a lot worse now. Oops, it just it just keeps going. Uh, maybe we can put a cap or something over that. We're not gonna do too much to this truck. Besides cover it up, maybe spray it down to prevent the rust from going too much further. But that door, the door has a hole in it. I mean, there's a lot we can there's a lot we can do to cover up some stuff. Definitely, definitely looks a lot better. So the next thing we have to tackle is getting uh, getting this prepped to receive our new paint. Normally, I would just go ahead and spray rattle can right on over this, but I mean, it's got that protective uh, protective surface on it. And it's really, it's really slick, and I don't even think it's gonna stick well enough for me if I don't scuff it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use the green Scotch Brite and just come in here and just scuff it up real good, and then go get my paint and just spray it on. I mean, again, we got all these, we got the truck cheap, we got all these parts cheap. Uh, this is just gonna be something to play with for a little while, maybe get a little bit of good gas mileage. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be a little bit better than what we normally do. So I'm gonna do this and I'll run down and go get the, I'll run down to the parts store, get the paint if I can find it. And we'll, uh, we'll hit this with some paint. I finished up the body panels, just getting them scuffed up. I went ahead and tossed them on the truck. They're just sort of sitting on there. I have like one or two bolts in everything uh, you can see can you see that see that I just scuffed it up with the scotch bright and I just wanted to put it on there to see how it fits I mean it'll sit something like that so the gaps are the gaps are pretty good um, I'll have to adjust some stuff I'm gonna paint the bumper black and uh, I still need to get a grill and I think it has an insert right here. I can't remember. I'm gonna go ahead and power wash this off real quick to get rid of all the, all the dust off of it. And then we can go ahead and hit it with some paint. All right, let's just spray this off real quick. We don't have to do a music montage on this one. You guys are probably getting tired of that by now, right? Just spray the little dust off of it. I'm gonna wipe it off. And then we'll take these body panels back off. Set the cardboard down and uh, hit it with a little bit of spray paint. We're just gonna rattle can these. Nothing fancy. All right. Well, that ought to be good enough. Okay, I'm gonna pull these panels back off because they are super hot. Oh, that's hot, hot. From sitting in that sun, and we can't spray them when they're that hot. So 
Well, I'm gonna bring him in, set him in the shade here and let him cool down a little bit. Bumper. And paint that black. Ooh, it's hot. It's so hot. The fender. Okay. Let's let those rest for a little bit. Cool off. Come back, wipe it down a little bit, and we'll start spraying this. Okay, again, this is not a professional job in any shape, way, or form. So I'm just going to come in here with some distilled water and my microfiber towel and just dry this, not dry this off, but rub any excess that we didn't get with the, uh, the power washer off. You know, a little bit of residue, not very much at all. So it should be ready to paint. Uh, I know it's not the right way to do things, but it is our way. And it will be good enough for who it is for. Well, the parts are cooled down enough that we can go ahead and paint them. So uh, we'll just slip on the old mask here. Grab the old rattle can and get to work. So now it's the next day and we did get our fender done, our bumper done and our hood done. I have it stacked right here against the uh, the old hood. It doesn't match up exactly, but I guess that's gonna be good enough for us. Before we put it on, we need to address the problem of this bumper bracket a little bit. Uh, maybe smack that one a little bit. I'm just gonna hit it with a sledgehammer and hope that brings it right back in the shape. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's cracked right there and it's pulling away on both sides. So it should just bring, I should be able to bring it back over just by hitting it a couple of times. So let's give that a try real quick. Well, we got our alignment tool. We just want to be careful not to smack anything else. So we'll just give it a couple love taps. Not bad. Now let's give the other side a few uh, smacks. Yeah, that's not bad. It doesn't take much. They are uh, not very sturdy. Now it's time to start putting our fenders back on and seeing if this will align up or if we have to move that core support over just a little bit more. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to pop this headlight out just a bit to see what's uh, going on behind here. Yeah, come on out of there. Ooh, that was really in there. So, yeah, it's tweaked just a little bit right here. Can you see a kink? Uh, so, must be pulling that, and this is probably pushed back. So, we can probably pull on this and beat on that a little bit, get it back into shape. This is how much we're off on the fender, and we need to align this bolt hole all the way over there. So, hmm. core support might have been easier, but we'll make do with what we got. Okay, what we're gonna have to do here is uh, move just this end back a little bit. So, in order to do that, we had to come in here and support the core support. 
by putting us a ratchet strap to the back end of our truck. And that way we can beat on this and hopefully tweak it out just a hair. Let's give that a try. Okay, ready? Here we go. We need a little more tension on that. Let me give it a couple, a couple more pulls there. rust is really coming out but I think she's moving a couple more tweaks of the old ratchet strap wow this core support it is it is moving it is so flimsy though that's scary. All right, let's fit the fender again and see uh, see how it looks now. Okay, attempt number two on uh, fitting the fender. Oh, what you hitting? There we go. Oh, that's a lot better. Um, might have went too far. Let's get our bolt back in here and uh, tweak just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let's check this front end again. Okay, did pull it out just a bit far, but only like Mm, a half an inch, which isn't a big deal since you can push this core support back about a whole inch by hand. We will just drop a bolt in here. Okay. Like so. And our core support's aligned again. Just that easy. Next up, let's try to hang our bumper into place and uh, see how that looks. If any, we're gonna need adjusting it. Might be on the bumper, but it has uh, slots at the end of the frame rail that should make it relatively easy. Hopefully it's just gonna kind of fall into place. Well, looking at the bumper, and I scratched the paint already a little bit, it doesn't align with that line. So I think we're gonna have to use a few bumper shims in order to bring that top in out just a little bit. Let me throw those in and then we'll come back and have a look and see if it aligns up a little bit better. Okay, we have our shims in and our bumper line is uh, looking pretty good. So I did have to add a few more and you know, when I, say a few more I mean like six so that is definitely way off but it looks good now and that's what is important let's go ahead and land the hood back in here and we can check our clearances from side to side and see how they line up oops too far Something about like that. All right, hood fitted. Let's look at the lines. So the line on this side, it's pretty good. Not bad at all, it looks nice. This one, be she's a bit wide. I'll come back a little bit later and try to adjust this in, but I wanna fit, fit the grill. I went and bought a grill 
uh, for it. So let's fit that and see how it lands on there before we do any major adjustments. If the, if the grill fits in there perfect and we can't adjust it over anymore, then yeah, we'll just leave it like that because it's, it's not bad. It's definitely noticeable, but only when you look at it. Now here is the part I have been waiting for. I had to go like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, in order to pick up this grill. Is it upside down? It's not upside down. How does this go in? Do I have to, am I gonna have to take the bumper off? That would suck. Huh. You'd think it would just fit in there, but maybe the core support being jacked up. I can't. Man, it looks like I am going to have to uh, take the bumper off. Lovely. Okay. Well, I haven't uh, bolted the bumper all the way down anyway, so let's yank that back off and uh, I probably better fix the hood, hood latch cable before we put all that together. Bumper is off and let's try this again. Okay. That goes there and I have a gap, so there's that. But I will put a couple of these screws in here, at least on this side. I think I'm gonna need a longer screw and uh, some more uh, shims in order to get that side on. Where's my torch bit? Let's get this screwed on here real quick so it holds up and we can see what we're doing. There we go. There. Okay, yeah, there's um, a half an inch gap right there. So <laughs> you're gonna need a really long screw. This core support is just, it's, it's bowed right about there. It's, it's not straight, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, and, but I still have room. I haven't put the hood cable on yet, but I still have room to get that in there, so. That's no big deal, so we'll just leave that for later and continue on with this. Let's see if the bumper will, will fit up there. Okay, let's give this a fit real quick and see. Uh, no wonder it wouldn't. Yeah, those, uh, those frame horns are pushed back about, also about half an inch, and uh, the bumper is going right up against the grill. So it needs to come out about that far, so it looks like more shims and longer bolts for everybody. Okay, I refitted the uh, bumper and uh, we got our shims in place. So let's go down here and have a look and see uh, what we did. Okay, so we're, okay, there you go. You know those, uh, you know those old sockets you have in your toolbox that you don't use? Well, that's them plus a uh, whole bunch more washers on that side this frame rail or this uh frame head is really pushed back actually the end of the the whole end of the frame from about here over it's wrinkled a little bit so those crunch zones were doing their job and they took some of that impact and moved uh moved everything back oh it looks almost almost like two inches all the way up there at the top and uh, on this side, it wasn't as bad, but I still had to use one socket right there and a few shims right there. Whoops, right there. But yeah, three sockets, a whole bunch of shims later, and it's pretty much even, so. That's about, that's about where it should sit. I went ahead and put in the turn signals from the old bumper. So we got pretty much everything straight. I put in the hood latch here so it latches down. And um, this is our hood line here now. This is our hood line here. We seem to have that adjusted up nicely and it's, it, looks, it looks pretty even on both sides and on, the front 
everything seems to match up. There's a little bit more gap here than there is here. And that's the only deal. And uh, actually this uh, headlight, you can see a little bit more gap on that headlight than that headlight. So yeah, that's pretty much when you go to buy a vehicle, some of the things that you're gonna wanna check, crawl up underneath there and see if it's been hit in the front end. I mean, obviously you can tell this one has some damage because that fender is just not matching the rest of the vehicle. Uh, I don't know if I got the wrong paint code or is it because, I think it's because it's been repainted because this one, you can see the chip, one color is darker. So when they repainted it, they made it a little bit darker. So I took the paint code from the original color. This is what it should be, but they repainted it. So we tried. But anyway, it's looking pretty good. And I think we're ready to almost take another test drive. I put the windshield wipers back on too, but we still have that problem with it cutting out. I went ahead and bought a fuel filter. I'm gonna toss that on real quick. We'll go for a test drive and see if that solves our problem. Okay, so I pulled the old fuel filter out. This is a new one. They're not exactly the same. <laughs> the ends are the same. Somebody rigged up something here, had a couple of hose clamps on it, uh, which, you know, GM didn't have. But um, I don't know if you can see it here, but that is really cloudy. Looks like it has a lot of water in it. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't smell good. So, I think we have water in the gas, and uh, we have old gas. So, I think that's what's going on. I'm going to put this on, and we'll go out for another test drive, see if it does better. But I think we're going to have to run that entire, it's got half a tank of gas. I think we're going to have to run that half a tank of gas out, put some fresh fuel in, in order for this to run properly. But, let's get this on there. Let's go for a ride and see how well it does. I just shook it out a little bit more after I ended that. And uh, there is some serious goop coming out of there. This sand, there's something green. There's a whole bunch of garbage in there. So hopefully this will resolve our problem. Okay, I just got done changing the fuel filter right here. So. Uh, this is it right here. See these two clamps? I replaced these, but this is the style of clamp that I had on it before. Jim doesn't use those, so somebody was in here mon monkeying around with it before, but we got it changed out. And uh, if you want to know where your fuel filter is on the S10, and I don't know how many other vehicles have it, uh, GM, but it, on the S10, this is right about here. I can fill the edge of the driver's side door. So pretty much right there change your fuel filters well i guess there's nothing to do but take it out for a test drive and see if the fuel filter solved our problem all this is good hold it on good enough so let's go for a ride okay it is time for the test drive she's already running i had to jump start it because the battery is not good i'll replace that the next time i get by walmart we don't put the good batteries in this. Actually, I don't put the good battery in anything. I'll buy Walmart batteries all day long. One year warranty, value. Uh, that's, that's all we need. You know, those value batteries usually last three years, three to five years anyway, so. And then I usually don't keep a car longer than a couple years. If it lasts me three years, that's uh. That's really saying something. But that's just me. Anyway, we're coming up on a stop sign and let's see uh, how she does. Nice, smooth, didn't bog down. Of course, it's only been like a mile so far. It usually happens within the first couple miles. It'll start doing it. Anytime I was coming up to a stop sign, it would come up stop and it just start chugging down like it was running out of fuel so let me drive this around a couple more times and uh we'll come up to a couple stop signs and see what happens and for some reason our uh our brakes are doing pretty good too so i don't know what that was about 
remember our master cylinder was uh, dry and uh, coming up to the next stop sign stopped and fine and away we go give it some hard acceleration good squeak the tires there just a hair accelerating hard is not stuttering doing good let's uh, get a couple more stop signs under our belt Coming up on one more stop sign. We'll come up on this one kind of hard and brake hard. See what happens. Coming up, braking hard. Stopped. Waiting for traffic. Still idling good. There's another stop sign right around the corner here. Let's accelerate hard on that one. Good acceleration. Hard stop. Stop. Waiting, going, good, nice. All right, this keeps it up on these next uh, stoplight. I think we're headed back to the house and we're gonna call it good. Did, uh, we should have started bogging a little bit by now, especially on the really hard acceleration. All right, stoplight this time. So big four-way intersection. This is where we do not wanna die. So we'll just come up on a normal like and we're gonna have to sit here for a little while so this would definitely test it idling smooth the acceleration coming down this uh, big 45 mile per hour four lane super street was just fine we'll hit a couple of roundabouts well Mustang so loud all the time. I mean, is that necessary? Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Roundabout. <laughs> we'll go and do a couple roundabout or a roundabout and see if a fuel slosh problem or anything like that. But set there at the light, no problems. Hard, we'll do a hard acceleration here. Floorboarded right now back off because that's 65 and this is a 40 right here so we'll back <coughs> we'll back over that because we have no license plates on this so we don't want to be caught doing uh you know 30 miles an hour whatever over the speed limit with no license plate anyway let's uh, come up to another one and try it again and here comes our next stoplight Jam the brakes a little bit harder this time. Do a little fuel sloshing around and wait for traffic to clear. Still idling just fine. All right. Uh, we'll do a hard right hand turn. Squeak the tires just a hair. Now we're coming up on a roundabout right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do about I don't know. 30 around this roundabout get a little fuel slosh nice hard turn around the roundabout there we go no problems there no problem with the fuel slosh no problem with the hard braking i think we have a lick all right so i stopped here at, in a business plaza where uh I didn't do any of this. This is uh, this is our version of a street takeover or streetcar takeover, whatever they call it. But they really don't do it in the intersections right here in Indiana. They find an abandoned parking lot like this. This place is up for rent. Nobody's around. So in the middle of the night, they come here and they do their little Hellcat, Charger, Camaro, Mustang, roundy round thing. And, I mean, they're not hurting anybody. And there's no one else around. This is all business plaza. So, at least they're not doing it in the middle of the intersection. But anyway, our truck is running. By now, it would have definitely just shut off just from idling. It, does, it did not like to idle before. And now it's running perfect, perfectly smooth. No problems whatsoever. So. 
do the small things, do the easy things first before you get into the big things. Changing a fuel filter is no big deal. You should do it anyway. So that saved us from spending, you know, how much are fuel pumps for these things now? You can probably order it on eBay for like 50 bucks to get the cheap one or get the good one to AutoZone for like 180 bucks. But $7 for the fuel filter and we're back up and running. So nice. Let's have a quick look over the truck here real quick. I did buff a little bit on this side. So that paint's nice and shiny. I didn't do any of this. This is all dull. I'll do that uh, some other time. But paint doesn't quite match, but it has a good fender on it now. Good hood, good grill, good bumper. Uh, yeah, that's all we replaced. Everything's good. It looks fine. So. We, uh, we're going to go ahead and use this truck on some of our roadside assistance stuff because, uh, yeah, we need a little bit better gas mileage. We'll put a few thousand miles and then sell it on down the road later. So, and then find something else to play with when we get bored of this or I get tired of sitting in a, a tiny truck, one of the two. But uh, that's it. We got a nice truck for on the cheap. Facebook Marketplace parts, a little rattle can, and a fuel filter, and we're back in business. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Street Rat Garage. Until next time.